welcome to episode 49 of the Pop Collectors Alliance podcast, Emerald City Comic Con and Toy Fair New York release recap. I'm your host, Rick, as always, joined by my co bearded co host, Captain Strongbeard, Mr. Piper. The audio issues are behind us. We have moved into Monday night. How are we doing this evening? I'm so proud of the fact that I was able to figure out what was going wrong with my setup. It was, I was ready to light a fire in my, in my kitchen because this is so bad. We've been dealing with this for like three days. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always rewarding to know because not only in the future you'll know what to do, but just to, to, just to fix the issue yourself without having to seek outside help. It was the dumbest problem, too. <laughs> it was so stupid. Whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those things, too. Like, when I started podcasting in the very beginning, I kind of just referenced videos all the time. So when we did our first episodes of podcasts, like, way back in the day, I would see background noise. And I was like, how do I fix this background noise? And you would spend, like, five hours on how to fix background noise. And it would be one switch <laughs> on the mixer. <laughs> Oh, uh, you forgot to, to turn the, the fingle dangler on. Turn on the muty tiddly winker. See, and this is my problem is, like I told you, I have a background in audio also, but mine is all like live production. And you don't worry about things like background noise and live production because there's <laughs> lots of background noise. You don't have, compre- I mean, you can compress stuff, but it's just not, it's a way different than doing like studio recording like we do. And, uh. So it's just like, I'm blind. I like, I know, I know what things are, but I'm like, I don't know why these things are doing the things that they're doing. So, but I mean, I'm happy we're, we're done with it. And maybe now we can have a hundred thousand times better audio. Well, the good thing is, is when you're doing live audio, there's always noise in the background anyway. So you don't really care here. It's like, That's what fine, I'm saying, I, you know, <laughs> exactly. As always, you're listening to the only podcast on the internet dedicated to empowering pop collectors. And anytime you're listening to the Pop Collectors Alliance, you enter the no flip zone. (laughs) Weekly pickups this week. So for me, it was actually a lot. In in a week that I did not have a lot of time, surprisingly until the end of the week, I was able to pick up a lot of things. I I had this, I guess, fantasy of going to Toy Fair New York and I was going to be like, man, I'm going to be walking around. Be handing me Lego sets. I want to come back with all these goodies. I want to have Santa's sack full of presents and bring it back. Can't fit it on the plane. And I got a wooden car and a Kripken. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else was throwing things at you. Get away from our booth. Yeah. And it was a big eye opener for me, too, because if you, the badges were color coded. And I said this on my live stream. If you haven't looked at it, check it out. It's on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash pop collectors alliance. But I was talking about they on the badges they have, um, they're like white badges, but on the bottom they have a color strip. And for press, that color strip was blue. And so anytime anyone saw blue strip on the bottom of your badge, they would literally turn around and look away from you, except for like at the Kripkins, uh, Cryptozoic and uh, at Funko. They were really open to talking to you, but everybody else was kind of like standoffish. Well, and they're, they're there to like make huge sales. So we, we weren't buying anything, especially not like on that volume. So they were just like, mm. <laughs> blue is the color of the devil there. That's what that was. Exactly. It's like the, the scarlet letter of Toy Fair New York. <laughs> Don't get that blue, that blue P. That blue P is almost as bad as a, as a red A. <laughs> if people, exactly. that, that's a literary reference. Literize yourself, people. Learn get about smart. it. Get good. <laughs> But yeah, they did. Um, I was thinking about the loyal subjects. I went to that booth. The booths that I were most stoked about was NECA and um, Kid Robot, the loyal subjects, Super 7, Cryptozoic, and Funko, because those are the main things I, I really collect. And I really enjoy looking at the Mezco toys stuff because the detail in their figures and the collectibles they have are just amazing. But I was like, can I get something for one of these booths? And the only booth I got anything from was Cryptozoic. So shout out to Cryptozoic on the podcast. Man, they were really cool in New York, too. When we were at New York Comic Con, like everybody that was at Cryptozoic's booth was like the nicest person. And I don't know those are all like marketing people that are there, but it's still they were really awesome. So that, that's not a big surprise. But if you notice, like all those companies that you listed, they're all either 
very small companies or like borderline independent toys. Exactly. Yeah. They're, it, they're on the smaller side, which is, that's, that's what I like. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's food, if it's like movies, if it's music, if it's smaller, it's usually better. And that's what I'm like kind of drawn to. Yeah. And I felt out of my element there too, because I'm like this big burly guy with a beard and everybody's wearing suits with like collar, you know, these $400 shirts and walking around talking to everybody. And you know, just money is just being thrown around there going to Lego booths and stuff. But I didn't get, you know, I didn't get anything and I got the cold shoulder a lot of places. But another thing, for Cryptozoic Piper, there is another limited piece that is releasing at Emerald City Comic Con on is it a, Friday. Is it a Kripkin? Yeah, it's a Kripkin. So it's limited uh, to 300 pieces. So you well, gotta check we, it out. We got the, uh, the Blood Moon Jersey Devil, and that was so cool. Oh, dude, it was awesome. And there, when you were at the convention, they were basically like selling them directly to people because before you had to, before the convention, you had to go in and register for, you know, maximum of two. But when we got there, like, hey, man, you want to buy like 50 of these things? Do you know those things are $75 now? Yeah, it's crazy. And it, because what were they limited to? It was 300. Yeah, 300 pieces. And dude, the Kripkins, if you guys haven't checked them out, you got to really check them out because they're really unique figures. They don't, they follow, you know, myths and monsters but it's their own cryptozoic spin on it. So they kind of cuten up their figures, but they're also coming out with five inch vinyl figures sometime this year or next year. So that's going to be really cool too. That makes me so excited. Like if anybody wants to go out and start collecting a new line, I can't say enough that cryptozoic is a really good company to look at because uh, to me, like their art style is something along the lines of kid robot, but it's affordable because like when you're getting the kid robots, like kid robots really cool things like they just had a drop on their shop the other day it was the little bunny but it was all just made up of like skulls like oh it was that just was like a big so pop- awesome dude that thing was like 200 dollars, and it was a limit of there was it was a 100 pieces because they're all handmade and that's the other thing they do they have all these like designers that they'll do like ultra short runs of stuff but that thing sold out in four seconds and they had a hundred of them they were selling for either it was a hundred or two hundred dollars like like kid robot collectors are super diehard and they don't even care about money. It's the greatest thing ever. They're just like, Oh what? That's $700 for that block. Yeah. I'll buy that. It says kid robot on it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm down with that. But to me, cryptozoic, it, they, they have that same art style or a very similar art style, kind of streety almost. So if you yeah. want to start collecting something that's really affordable and it's, you're basically getting in at the ground floor, definitely check out cryptozoic. Oh, and I don't know if you know this, but one of their uh, main designers actually follows us on Instagram. Oh, wow. I didn't know the other day I was looking through people like new people that were following us. And I saw this guy. I was like, that name sounds so familiar. I don't even remember who it was now. I'll have to go back and look at it. maybe we can put it in the show notes. I was looking through his artwork. I'm like, I've seen some of the stuff before. And then I realized in his little tag is his designer cryptozoic. I was like, oh, that's so that's so cool. <laughs> that is awesome. And uh, you guys check them out too. Cryptozoic is cool, but I want to give a special shout out to Funko because I will tell you one thing about their booth. Their booth was really awesome, but it was also really open. And when I say that Lego turned people away, if you didn't have an invite, Lego was <laughs> not unique in that at all. There was the dude Mattel and you know Ryan's Toys or whatever that you know that little kid that does stuff on YouTube. Yeah, they had all of these like secret booths and the walls were like 12 feet tall. And if you didn't have a million dollars, you're not even stepping in the door, but I'm sure Lego, it hurt the most because it's something that you actually cared about. Yeah, man, it, that one cut deep, but Funko, I'll tell you what, when I came there, everyone was walking up, talking to you, asking you if everything was okay. If you wanted to inquire about pieces, I get to talk to Sully there. I got to talk to Dima there. Cameron was there. They were all in their business form. And I understand because it's a big business event for them too. I saw Brian Mariotti spoke to him for like two or three seconds because people were pulling him right and left, but it's still like Funko still has that rock star vibe of a company there. And not a lot of companies have it. They're, they're kind of like clean cut, you know what I mean? And where Funko is like Mm. gritty and their designer, their lead designers walking around with a tie dye t-shirt beard and flip flops, you know, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, they were really awesome. I feel like you probably should have, when you saw everybody was in, like, suit and tie and all, like, you know, businessed up, you should have totally, like, gone into the bathroom and, like, cut off your, your jeans, because I'm sure you're wearing jeans. So you should have cut <laughs> off your jeans at the knees and then just, like, took your undershirt off and unbuttoned your, like, uh, button-up shirt. So just, like, you, that's, it was, you were exposed, you know? <laughs> you should have just walked around and be like, hey, I want to come in there and look at all your toys. <laughs> Hey, it's Ricka, Ricka from Triple Pickens. <laughs> I mean, cut the sleeves off of my button-up shirt. I got these off. jorts on. Jorts exactly. and business socks. <laughs> it's your business jorts. Oh, man. But anyways, so long story short, Toy Fair New York. I didn't really pick up anything but a toy car, a couple Funko catalogs, and uh, what, what else? Um, a, a Kripken. That was my take from there. But That was your haul. As- yeah, my haul that that took up one cubic inch in my my uh, luggage. I like packed light for that reason too, and yeah, swing and a miss. <laughs> well, that's not your fault. Yeah, but anyways, for Funko stuff this week, I got the box lunch exclusive. I call him Papa Degba, but what's his real name? Doctor Doctor Dan? Facilier. <laughs> Doctor Facilier. I think that's how you. Say, I don't know how to say it. Uh, Skullman Von Top Hat. Yeah. Willy Wonka with a skull. There you yes. go. <laughs> and then I got the Alien 40th edition, the Ripley in the spacesuit, and the Xenomorph. My wife really wanted those characters. I did go to GameStop because they had the, uh, what was the Power Up Rewards Day for members where you got all the good discounts on Saturday. They had buy two, get one free on all pop. And I went to get the throne characters, you know, Cersei's on the throne, the Night King, and all they had was Cersei Lannister and the Night King on the throne, but they didn't have anyone else, and they're 25 bucks. So it was like, do you guys have anything in the back to help me out to get me to this box? You know, the, get you don't free? ask for things in the back. You know they don't exist. You're exactly right, because they didn't. So there I didn't no get those. back. Yeah, the back is like a, a seedy motel bathroom, 10 by 10 by 10. That's a big bathroom. <laughs> that's where you lose your kidney at man that's the operation table for the black market <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i was able to get the office space set at uh, hot topic so that was really cool i was really stoked about that uh three for 27 and we got a uh, that's where we got the xenomorph there too and i think we picked up two other items i forget what we got oh another um piece from the air the avatar set and then just a random pop that we wanted to make that deal so we got six for 54 i guess you could say good job and then that was pretty much all pop wise i got i did purchase another collection as you guys already see we'll get to that in the announcements so i was successful there i went to a pop swap that was local here and was able to get a great deal on some stuff so you guys see that all in the auction this week but also again once again I would say I'm batting about 10 or 15% right now because every time I go to get a collection, for every one collection I get, I'm really contacting 8 to 10 people. Everybody still hates you, huh? Well, I don't think it's hating now. I think that tax season has really kicked in and so that there's a lot of competition on that market. So I'm hoping that our money can outlast that unless we go broke and we're standing under an underpass in Austin somewhere. We're, we're going to go very, we're going to be very poor. Very poor at the end of the day. We're going to come back for Emerald City and then we're going to live in a cardboard box. Down by the river. Down by the river. But that's all I picked up this week. What'd you get, Piper? I got Shazam. I got the, was it the Hot Topic one? The Glow in the Dark? Shazam. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that guy, but it was Glow in the Dark, so I got it. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got that. And then, uh, what? Oh, then, then I ordered some of the Dr. Facilier from the, the Frog Princess. I hope I'm saying that name right. I'm probably not, and I'm going to look it's just got like super Cajun, stupid. Yeah, it's got something Cajun to do with it, so you're saying it wrong. You gotta be, but it's okay. I'm not French. I'm not French enough. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's, that's all I got. I have not picked up really anything at all. Yeah, I ordered those through Box Lunch as well, I, but I didn't get a shipment notification, and I know a lot of people have already gotten them. So I'm kind of worried, 
uh, maybe my order is getting canceled or something? My, well, I don't think so. I think they, they might still have them on the website. I don't think it was a sellout. If, if it did sell out, it took a little while. But uh, I, have, I have mine coming in tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. Well, maybe mine will be a surprise, too. Like, oh, what did I order? Uh, here's four things that aren't chases. Congratulations. <laughs> How, so this is, this is the challenge right now. We're going we're gonna to pose to the listeners. How many chases did I get and how many did Ricky get? Zero and two. I don't know. I think I don't know if we ordered, I think we ordered five on my end. So hopefully we get more than one chase. Hopefully I have like uh, Hades luck and I get half of them chases. And then we can turn that right into a fancy schmancy Pop Collectors Alliance giveaway. Wow, boom, boom. Cue the air horn. I don't know what that sound effect was, but it came out of my mouth. <laughs> hey, I liked it. Um, but that was it for this week. Easy week, huh? Yeah, I don't think I got anything else. I really don't. If I did, I don't remember it, and it's not on my wall. I like <laughs> lost it. That's that's your uh, inventory. Like I know you redid your room, so you're like, okay, this is I'm comfortable with it. I know exactly. I did lose my painting yourself, Mickey. I have no earthly idea where it's at. Oh my goodness! Did you even you started painting it too, right? No, I didn't paint it yet. Oh, so you were just waiting to do it. But you do have another thing coming in the mail, hopefully tomorrow, I think. All your stuff. <laughs> your birthday <laughs> present, your birthday pre- your Christmas present, and a Funko catalog. Oh, that's sweet, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me that. And then the Chase Glow in the Dark Genie. Oh, that's sweet. That's another one. I think I told you about that one already, though. Because I was like, hey, you want this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did tell me already. All right, that's what we got this week. Tell us what you got. Tell us how many chases you think Piper's going to get. Anytime Piper's finger graces the button of a mouse when he's ordering anything with an exclusive chase, it's better than a 50% chance, in my opinion. So let us know. I'm not that lucky. What? <laughs> you, you're fishing with that. Anytime you hear those words from Piper in any group, he's fishing. Just, just put a, a little trout jumping of a, out of the water little um, emoji and then he'll get it because he knows he's doing that so what do you guys think do you think that piper gets two or more out of the the five let us know at facebook.com slash pop collectors alliance twitter and instagram at pop alliance pod and you can just email us direct info at pop collectors alliance all right announcements for this week pca fan of the week i couldn't believe this when i selected it i was like wow it's about time. I thought this would be a lot earlier than it was, but Robin, congratulations. You are the PCA fan of the week. We will ship you a prize pack full of PCA goodies and everything nice, so you should get that soon, Robin. Congratulations again. Robin actually um, is a great member of our community, a great member of our Patreon, and as always, we remind everybody our goal for 2019 is to get 100 patrons, and we were very successful this past week. I believe we added four or five patrons to our family so we want to thank all of those patrons for joining up you are now part of the greatest collecting community in the world so welcome to the family guys and uh as you join tell and spread the word we want to get to those hundred members because we want to have this huge core community that is helping out if you haven't heard about our patreon you can go to patreon.com slash pop collectors alliance and select the tier that's right for you it is an amazing community piper can vouch for that uh, and all the help that we get and uh, receive from people. I mean, just tons of things going around. We see things that people are buying for people, sending them to each other. A lot of things that are sold at, sold at cost or below cost sometimes. So, I mean, it's just an awesome community. I can't thank our members enough for what they've done for us so far. Okay, guys, a lot of content coming up for our YouTube channel. We're really officially launching the YouTube Heavy this week. I'm doing a couple episodes with Kids Talk Pop. My kids are going to unbox some mystery minis. We're going to have our Toy Fair New York video that I'm trying to get through and put together for you guys. The easiest way to find us on YouTube is to go to YouTube and search for Pop Collectors Alliance. You can go to our website and click on the YouTube icon, or we'll just leave a note in the show notes below. So you can just check that out. Check out our YouTube channel. Big things to come. Spread the word about the PCA on YouTube. A lot of great content. I can't wait to get to Emerald City Comic Con. It's just going to be four weeks of editing. (laughs) 
All right, check out our newsletter. Stay up to date with the PCA. Get links to awesome PCA merchandise and our monthly newsletter giveaway. Some of the shop drops that we're going to put out later in the month. All kinds of stuff that are on there. Every newsletter releases the first week of every month. And we always do a newsletter giveaway. So we need to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Auction and live stream this Friday, March 1st, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Adjust your clocks as necessary. Pop has already been announced on our social media. And I'll tell you one thing. It is epic. And uh, we got a lot of stuff in this auction. I'm really excited about it. We're starting early just for that reason. I want to remind everybody, invoices must be paid within five days or items will be forfeit and placed into the next auction. But we want to see you guys there. We had an awesome time last week. I think we went for three hours and we just had a great time. Almost dead at the end, but hey, we made it. (laughs) Three articles up this week. We're going to start with a top 10 Harry Potter pops, an article my wife actually wrote. So you know it's coming from a Harry Potter fanatic. You'll see that today as you're listening to this come up on the website sometime today. And then I have an article releasing and then Piper will have an article. And hopefully we can keep that rhythm up. But you guys, uh, we're, we're trying to push out all the content we can for you guys. So a lot more to come on the website this week. So let's talk about Funko News this week. Not a lot of news this week. I want to bring something else up again that we've already talked about, but the Target exclusive mega release con, whatever you want to call it, is going to happen this Friday morning, March the 1st. All the pop will go live at, what are they saying, 8 a.m. in the 8 a.m. now? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, I think it's Eastern Standard Time, so remember, you can check it out. We're going to post it when it goes live. So you can just follow us on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com slash pop collectors alliance, like us and set notifications to on, and we'll be able to post it as soon as everything goes live. And you better be fast because there's a lot of great things on here. You got the Wayne's world two pack, the 10 inch Jack, Jack, the Titanic two pack, the DC bombshells, t-shirt box, like mystery, not so mystery box, 10 inch Hedwig, 10 inch wicket flocked baby nip it, which is another little wicket like Wookiee. Th- and not Wookiee Ewok thing. Uh, Darth Vader Glow, which is something I really want to get. Michael Jordan, I also want to get a Captain Marvel exclusive. I think that's glow in the dark. And then a toothless, the dragon 10 inch. I'm calling it the day of the 10 incher. <laughs> <laughs> you guys call it whatever you want. But that that's the really big announcement this week from Funko and Target coming out. Target Con 2019. Check it out. Also, Funko acquired some new licenses. Now, I, I saw this in a back and forth post. One thing that they acquired was Hunter x Hunter. That's an anime. My kids are really into it right now. So they were super stoked about getting that. And they also said One Punch Man in that release, but they've already licensed some of that product. So maybe it's just them expanding that product outside of pop into other items. So um, look for Hunter x Hunter and some additional One Punch Man in the near future. Have you seen One Punch Man? I saw one episode of it. It was it was pretty good. I liked it. It, it was not a uh, it was not a bad experience. I think it's good for everyone to check out actually because it's one of those things. It's kind of a a comical satire on superheroes, and he is definitely Saitama. I think I'm saying his name right. I might have said it wrong. He is like the anti superhero, and he tries desperately to be defeated, and he just cannot be defeated. And every episode you go through, and you're like, what's going on? It follows that storyline, so it's, it's pretty hilarious. So over to New York Toy Fair and our Emerald City Comic Con recap. So we'll start out with New York Toy Fair. We talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the episode, so I'm not going to go too far in depth on the overview of it. But I, I just wanted to hit some of the points that we made. So we, we said... The total number of releases, I think we were each between, you know, 150 to 200 in that range. It was actually over 200 pop. This is individual pop that were announced at Toy Fair New York for 2019 and exceeded my expectation. It's, it is what it is. That's what I'll say about that. 200 releases. Okay. So what line are you most excited about and what was your favorite? I'll let you take that first, Piper. You know, I have to think back what I what I actually remember was released. 
This, that's pretty bad, right? That I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't remember everything that came out. Oh, man, but it was a lot of stuff, man. It was a lot of stuff. Yeah, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know what's, what was my favorite. Um, a lot of people were saying the white on the horse was their favorite individual item. Got a lot of feedback on that. Um, yeah. Office, the, the office, too. That was, I mean, that was my wife's favorite. She, she made mention of that, so I do remember that. But um, I don't know. The, I think the, probably the two... Oh man, I don't know. Yeah, I th- I think the the white on the horse is probably it. And then uh my Jim Henson. That uh that's the thing. Home run, huh? Home run on that one. Uh I can't begin to explain how many home runs that we hit. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. We were we were right on target. And then also with Emerald City Comic Con, we guessed a lot of things too from my perspective. I'm super excited about as well. It's kind of freakish that we were able to kind of get everything that we did like like that we we guessed what we guessed yeah and i think some of it was kind of just a logical guess but we went out there on a couple of items and we guessed those i was like wow Uh, i couldn't believe it when we were getting the reveals we were messaging back and forth i'm like man we knocked it out of the park on that one man we knocked it out of the park on that one and scott one of our patrons also said in uh discord chat he was like oh you guys are inside agents for funko (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no but we're not we need to find out who is the leak who is the Seriously. mole you're out there you're alive i know who you are you need to identify yourself so my favorite line i'm going to go with line wise my favorite was probably the office something i waited for for a really long time but as far as favorite item now there was a couple that i was really low-key on like uh the Force gump Something that I've wanted for a long time is to get a Forrest Gump pop. To be able to see that, that's really, really awesome for me. Seeing things in person at Toy Fair New York changed. From the outlook, the white on a horse, that's a pop that you can't own one of. You have to get that whole set and then bend. Well, I think you might be able to take the Night King's body from the throne and throw him on a horse. Is that, is that what that was? What? You could, you could take him off? Uh, yeah you can take all of them off it looks is the horse separate well i don't know but i'm sure just by itself well you i'm sure you could get them off of there you know what i mean i'm sure that it's a possible with some knife and uh like an exacto knife or something like that but (laughs) you need to get that that scene you know the scene from last season um spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert where the night king is up on the edge of the cliff and throws the spear and does something, you know, bad for uh, a dragon, <laughs> for lack of better terms. <laughs> oh, God. All the whites are on the horses behind him. So you get a set of those and then the Night King and put him on a horse. Dude, that's an epic scene. You got to own like five of those horses. Good job, Wait, Funko. Are, are we just going to be buying a bunch of horses? Is that, is that the plan now? <laughs> I need to go see a man about a horse. Uh, multiple horses preferably 17 and they have to be dead and frozen <laughs> yeah where, where's this where's the store at where's the dead frozen horse store <laughs> and you know what the other thing i was super stoked about was the uh pop towns and that that's gonna transition into our next topic what is our opinion on pop towns we talked a little bit about this on a couple of our live streams when we went live last week Again, I can point you there. Go to facebook.com slash pop collectors alliance. You can get our first hand opinion of this and watch us both of our internets fail intermittently <laughs> throughout the broadcast. That was the weirdest thing ever, honestly. It's like, oh, well, I don't even know, dude. Well, I mean, your internet going down is bad, dude. If your internet goes down, there is something wrong. Somebody hit a phone pole or something. Yeah, something major did happen. I have no idea what it was, though. So. <laughs> well, you were showing me that outage map, and it was like encompassing your whole area. So I was like, something bad had to happen. Some guy got electrocuted or something. So my opinion on Pop Towns, we talked about on the stream. I think that this is a product that has an exponential amount of potential. Is that like a rhyme? Did I just make a rhyme? You just you just, you just ripped wrapped it. Yeah, I'm like Eminem right now. Um, yeah. But so <laughs> the Pop Towns. We talked about all the possibilities, but this is something that we have maintained 
since we started the podcast. It's something that we wanted Funko to do, give collectors uh, some scenery or things to go with the pop that they have. And one thing that I was kind of apprehensive about when I was looking at the pop towns was how are big are they going to make this? Is this going to fit in with my collection? Is it just going to be something that's big and bulky and I can't really enjoy because of the, the size? But actually, it's just a little bit bigger than a pop as far as height wise. And it, the detail on the Ghostbusters uh, that they had there, the firehouse, and then also the SpongeBob, his house, details were amazing. And these were hand painted. These weren't even the, the production line. These were their prototypes that were hand painted. They looked incredible. You know, I kind of was hoping that they would be like to scale. That's what I imagine. <laughs> a one of one scale, like what, like one six to one scale or uh, 20 to one scale or whatever. No, just like, you know, how big a pop is and like in relation to the size of a pop. I, I feel like the, the house should have been realistic, like a, like a dollhouse, like a Barbie dollhouse, you know, <laughs> hold on. Let me go to the store and buy this pop. You got people on Black Friday with boxes because they are. <laughs> just like, well, I mean, if it's a normal house, like SpongeBob's house would have been like, oh, what do you think? Like, like double the size of SpongeBob, but it's, it's not. Well, it'd be a 10 inch pop, really, at that point to yeah, be so accurate. That's not, that's not that like outlandish, I don't think. <laughs> it, it, it would be big ass boxes. But imagine if you had Castle Grayskull. It would be like, like a 15 foot box. <laughs> You're like walking out with like a TV box from Best Buy. Hey, what you got there, sir? Uh, this is a pop. Don't worry about it. With judging me, I see those judging eyes. This is eighty pounds of vinyl. I, oh man! I ain't worried about what people think. In your opinion, do you like what they're doing with the pop towns? You know, I do. I think it's cool. I think there's a lot of possibility, and I'm interested to see where that kind of goes. If you know what they're going to do with it. If it's just going to be like a couple of things and then they'll just forget about it and throw that idea in the back of the idea closet and they're not going to make any more. Or if it's going to be an ongoing thing. You know, one thing I didn't see when I was at toy fair, none of them. Cause we buried them. We gave the funeral procession weeks ago. It's true, man. There's nothing coming out. Um, but, yeah, Pop Towns is a product I agree with you too. The the thing that you have to be most cautious about is how do they expand it? But I do think that with these releases what Funko has realized is that collectors like the expansion on the pop line. And I know that that's their core product, but it's something that you really have to focus on as collectors because people love pop. And anything that you can do to sort of complement just pop in itself is going to benefit collectors. So I think ultimately, as long as the licenses are approved and everything flows through, I think we have an overall good product that's really going to benefit collectors, really add nice pieces to your collections. And I think people would tend to agree. Let us know what you think about Pop Towns. You can hit us up again on any place on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Pop Alliance Pod, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Pop Collectors Alliance. Let us know what you think about Pop Towns. Let us know what lines you would like to see them make next with Pop Towns. Castle Grayskull. <laughs> it, can, it can only be Castle Grayskull. I did see the Castle Grayskull that they did with Hero World. It kind of like Batman's Lair almost. It's not Castle Grayskull, but it's like of that wait, equivalent. Wait, did you, Hero World? You, you mean the... Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Savage World. Savage World. There you go. Not Hero yeah. World. Hero World <laughs> is dead too. It's one of those worlds. <laughs> it's one of those worlds in the Funko universe. But yeah, I did see the Bat Cave that looked like Castle Grayskull from Savage World. And, you know, tying into maybe some Funko news, I don't know the validity of this claim, but someone out there said that Masters of the Universe canceled their license with Funko because they did not like the Savage World lineup. But how, how did that work, though? Like, how, how do they go about just being like, yeah, nah, we're good. No more of that. Please. I mean, did somebody just pick up the phone and go, bring, 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 bring. Uh, this is Brian Mariotti. This is Steve from Masters of the Universe, and I'm super pissed right now. I canceled the <laughs> license. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> sir, that's not how this works. You don't get to just cancel licenses. This is a legal contract. This is not written on a napkin from Applebee's. Yeah, but I'm super peeved right now because you guys made muscly figures. But they're just like the original figures from the 80s. Well, it's Batman and it's not Skeletor. <laughs> he just throws the phone down. I mean, I don't know and, how that goes. See, so. and I, I thought it was I thought it was over because they um they did the Masters of the Universe as the Savage World figures. Yeah, and I, I, I thought I just, it was over that. I don't, I don't, I didn't, I don't think it was over the uh, the DC ones. I think it was over actual Masters of the Universe. Are you serious? They didn't like the way the figures turned out. Yeah, I think I thought that that's what I had read. No, well, this uh, yeah, is just rumor, anyways. So yeah, I mean, we'll see if if because the whole the whole rumor was there was supposed to be what Buzzsaw was supposed to be at Emerald City Comic Con, which that didn't come out, right? Not that I saw, but you know, it's one of those things too. I don't, you're I don't going trust out it. there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, wh- who is it? Oh, let's validate this claim. Uh, who are we going to, who put this out there? And you tie it back to some guy in uh, the foothills of West Virginia saying, yeah, it was me. I heard it on a television. Well, actually I don't have a television, but I got a radio and I heard it on there. Uh, okay. I think a lot of times people just start rumors to inflate the price of product. You know what I mean? It's just, that's in- the most realistic option. And I've seen it. We've seen it a couple of times, like the the bloody Baron, right? The um, uh, what was another one they did? The the with the bloody Baron. Oh, this is pop is canceled, and oh, they're gonna cancel these pop lines, and then they go on eBay and list their item for a hundred dollars over pop price guide just to see if they can do that turn and burn. Well, isn't that the reason that the metallic children of the forest is so high? Because the speculation is there's no more ever coming out, so that's why it's like four hundred dollars. Please. I don't care about the value. I care about the exclusivity. You shut your mouth. Dear HBO, don't allow anymore. (laughs) Please. I like the exclusivity, man. I love it. I'm uh, I'm with you. I feel the same way. You know know how I am. It's like our diamond in the rough. You know, we don't get these pieces anymore. And Funko's putting out, I, I think at a minimum now, the least number that they put out outside of fun days is like a thousand. So anytime you get a thousand pieces, you already see now on eBay, look at the freaking, uh, and we'll get to Emerald City Comic Con right after this, but the uh, Sour Patch Kids, the green Sour Patch Kids, I mean, it's selling for like $250 right now. It, people go crazy over this stuff. And why did, why did Funky Phantom not go for that much? The one I was able to get. Why is it not so expensive? Because everyone's like, oh, I remember Funky Phantom back in my day. How much is for that pop, young man? Uh, sir, that's a hundred and se- a hundred and seventy-four dollars. Back in my day, I used to pay for that with a Tootsie Roll and fourteen nickels. <laughs> so they're not they're not gonna pay that much money for it. I'm sorry, yeah. Robin. I'm I'm sorry, Robin. I wouldn't pay that much for him either, so it's all right. And I'm sorry, Vina. I'm sorry. I wasn't making fun of your guys' <laughs> age. <laughs> but so speaking of all this, you know, wrapping up Toy Fair New York and where we are with that. One thing I'd like to do is give an overall rating of the lineup. What do you think? If you had to rate it out of ten, ten being the best, one being I'm in a burning house boat out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with sharks circling me. What would you rate Funko's lineup for 2019? And why? I, I, I think that I would have to give it like a six and a half because I just was not super excited with a lot of what was at Toy Fair. And that kind of bummed me out. I, I really wanted to be just like over the moon about it. There were some really cool pieces of stuff that I liked, but I think if you look at everything as a whole, it's just, it didn't do it for me. I disagree. And on my rating, you know, I even said it, if you listen to my post, you know what I was talking about, I said they hit a home run and I'm not biased here in any way. I just, I want to tell you guys, you know, I look at things like Piper looks at things too. I want to be wowed. And, you know, fortunately for me, there was a lot of pieces and I think it's really subjective too, right? It's all about what you collect and what you can expect. I'm rhyming like crazy on the podcast this week. I have, I have two words for you, sports ball and post Malone. Yeah, I love Post Malone because he's he's from Grapevine, Texas. He's a garbage person, and that's fine. And I do like him, but 
I don't need him as a pop. And I, I've just never been like hip on the uh, hip. I feel like old. <laughs> like old I've never been uh, hip to the youngsters <laughs> music. Exactly. But I mean, I, the rock, the pop rock line, I, I, that's just never been my thing. But there was a lot of sports stuff. And this is me. I, I don't need your sports and my toys. I don't want none of your mascots. I need to pay, play my Heroes of the Storm. Well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, I mean, no, seriously, though. Okay, like all the, there's like a bunch of NASCAR ones, and you got the baseballs, and then you got, then when there's some soccer ones too. And the mascots too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I said the mascots. Yeah. So, yeah, so like it was, it was just a lot of stuff that I don't collect, and I don't have any interest in ever thinking about collecting. Yeah, I think, again, it ties into that subjectiveness of what you collect, what lines you collect. For me, it was a home run. I love Pop Towns. I was super excited about it. I am also super excited to see what Funko is going to do with board games. I don't know how that fits in, what their ideas are. Are they going to capitalize on current board games and integrate their characters and have pocket pops for things? I think that would be cool from a perspective of collecting, too, to get some unique limited pieces into board games, and they can integrate that as they choose. I also like a lot of their lines. I like the Simpsons. I thought they were going to really mess up the Simpsons and do like a new detailed version of the Simpsons or redo characters that were close to my heart from their first original line. But no, what they did is they expanded that line. They kept the detail on those characters virtually the same. They did a great job on that. I really am excited about The Office. I was excited about Office Space at London Toy Fair. I was excited about. The, like I said, the Pop Town, some of the Spider-Man pops that are coming out. I think as far as a Funko lineup is concerned, and I said this leading into Toy Fair New York, is that I would prefer if they expanded current lines and focus on that, not go out there and do too many crazy new things. I believe that they did that. For that reason, I'm going to rate them a 9.5 out of 10 on what I think 2019 has to offer. Man, you're being generous with that rating. I know, right? It's good. Tell us if you guys agree with me or you agree with Piper. Let us know on all our social media channels. We want to hear from you. And, uh, you know, we value your opinion as well because it plays a big part in the larger community of what we do. Um, but yeah, I, I'm super excited about 2019. And speaking of super excited for things, we are almost two weeks away from Emerald City Comic Con. And immediately after, and it felt like we had, what, 15 straight days almost of releases to cover because you had Toy Fair London, Toy Fair New York, and then Tuesday morning, oh, by the way, here's our Emerald City Comic Con lineup for 2019. Now, a couple of things that we said in the last episode, we did some predictions. We said, well, how many limited numbered edition pieces will there be at Emerald City Comic Con? And for us, I think our consensus was two, and I believe we got three. Yeah. We got both Freddy Funkos with old Sally Salmon, the Salamander Salmon thing, whatever, fishy guy, and old Sour Patch Miss Scrumpkins, Mr. Green mm -hmm. guy. <laughs> so we got three out of those. We said, how many chromes will there be over or under one? I said over. You said under, I think. I th you either said I, you're, I said I think I said none. Yeah, you said nope. There it is, right there on the end. None. And uh, yeah, no chromes. They're learning. And I have a couple theories about this. I'll get to in a second. But still, we said what green exclusive will there be? I said Harry Potter, something along the lines of the Quidditch World Cup, and Bazinga nailed it. So you got the chrome right for sure. I got the Harry Potter green pop right. I think we named a couple other uh, green pop themes that we got right in that as well. So, I mean, all over the My, board. The first thing that I had said was I was hoping for some more Marvel like comic books. And that was the very first thing they announced was that Thor. Oh, yeah. Thor right away. And I, you were like, boom. And dude, that Thor looks freaking amazing. I think it's one of the cooler pops and pieces of this release. I'm stoked about it. Yeah, and total pop for Emerald City Comic Con, we both guessed over 50. We were way off. They went with a limited release this time. And I'll get, go ahead and get into my opinion on that and see if you agree or disagree with me on that. So their total pop was around 30, somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, sorry, poor production on my part. I didn't look at how many they released. But somewhere in the 30 range, we guessed both over 50. 
So we were way off on that, but I do have a theory about this. And here's my theory, Piper. I think that San Diego Comic-Con is going to be no holes barred, exclusive city. We're going to have a pop-up shop. We're going to have maybe the HBO shop is going to be there. You're going to have a full lineup at the Funko booth. I think that they're just gearing up for that. You know, there's a lot of things to do with San Diego that I think that they can't do at Emerald City this year. That's why you didn't see a ton of Game of Thrones pieces because they had that limitation. They can't release anything before the show comes out. And if you know anything about Game of Thrones, we're not getting any previews at all. We're almost a month away for the release of the last season, and we really don't have any previews or any details. They did a 10 second clip. Oh, by the way, let me get on a little tangent here. Guess what is coming to HBO? A Deadwood movie. What? what? I want to be excited about that, but I never watched Deadwood. Uh, you got to, and then you're going to be excited about it. So I'm super stoked about that. But still, back to San Diego Comic-Con. I don't think that they're uh, releasing a lot of Emerald City because of that. What do you think, Piper? I, I think that's very feasible because there's so much that they should and could be releasing, but they don't. They are probably bound by contract. Either that or just out of like consideration, they, they can't release anything. So that, that's a very, that's very likely. And San Diego is always a lot bigger show. It, it's always bigger for Funko anyway. So I have, I have very high hopes for it. But you know what? I was not disappointed by Emerald City. So I'm fine with everything that we got. I think that that was a lot better. In my opinion, the releases for Emerald City got me way more excited than uh, Toy Fair did. Yeah, I look at Emerald City kind of like a connoisseur of collecting. They put pieces out this year that were higher quality. While they're limited in numbers, I think a lot of the pieces are really cool. Like where they have the Incredibles. Um, I forget what her name is, but they have and void. the detail. Yeah, Void. And the detail in that pop, very detailed. They have that. They have Arya Stark. They have some Freddy Funkos. I actually like the fact that they went out on a limb here with the Sour Patch Kids Emerald City Comic Con exclusive. I like that myself. I did get mixed signals, though, from people. Half It's like 50-50 like the lineup, 50% don't like the lineup. It was definitely a weird combination, but I think that's why I liked it. Yeah, me too. I agree with you there. I think getting that variety was really cool. So. Question. So out of all of the releases that they're announced for Emerald City, first off, do you think they're going to announce anything else or do you think they're done? You know, we thought they were, but unless they're going to do like a super secret, like the day of or the, like oh, a couple of days before, I would be so excited about that. But I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I think this is what we're getting. Please, Funko. Please. How, how awesome would that be, dude, if we get there? And the day of the con, they're like, hey, oh, by the way, there's this uh, chrome for me, Goku would be huge. Or um, this other piece that we didn't announce. We just kept it quiet until we, you guys got to the booth. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I would, I like, I'm going to keep my hopes up high. I just don't think it's going to happen. No, no matter how bad I want it to, I, I think this is what we're, we're stuck with. I wouldn't say stuck with, but this is what we're getting. And uh yeah, so I'm I'm okay with it, man. Uh, it's it's a good selection. How cool would it be if we get into the Funko party and they're like, "Oh, you guys all came in here. Guess what? So we're uh, announcing a limited uh, 200 piece item. Uh, you guys at the party get the first hundred. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or the only ones? No, all 200 of them go to the Funko party. Yeah, uh, I couldn't imagine how many people's phones come out right then and there, like, "Oh, waffling ten spots for for fifty dollars." <laughs> chomping at the bit anyways Please. enough about waffles i not getting into that mess drama 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 we're not allowed to talk right. about it yes hashtag no politics on the podcast uh, I don't even think that's politics but still anyways it's a touchy just, subject it's like religion yeah, yeah right <laughs> it's like religion in the, the Funko world like the, it's, it's like Lord Voldemort of the Funko world <laughs> He who shall not be named. <laughs> yes, there you go. What was your favorite release out of all the releases for Emerald City Comic Con, Piper? Bro, it's Freddy Funko with the salmon. You it like the that most, for real? It is the most Seattle thing they could have done. Oh, dude, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I loved, loved it. it too. 
Yeah, yeah. so I, I was good with that one, but I, as far as like the the regular items that were released, like uh, not the Freddy. I think I think the the shark is cool too, man. Oh, dude, that yeah. Even the I, the fantastic I don't care about, plastic. I don't care about the fantastic plastic, but I think it's cool. Well, actually, that would be four limited pieces then, because I think he's limited too, right? No, I think only one of the Freddies is limited. I think it's just the one with the brown waiters. Oh yeah, the other one's a limited edition to the Funko Shop, and then you have um, Sharky McShark Finn that is limited to three thousand pieces. Yeah, so there's only three. So we're still we're still in the we're still good on the guesses. <laughs> we, we're still within the margin of error, so that's good. So my favorite, I'm gonna go with. This is gonna take everybody by surprise. Is it my the favorite, dude? I that was my second favorite. I'm not <laughs> oh, even gonna shut, lie. Shut I'm up. not even joking, dude. I am not even joking. I don't even like skateboards, but I just think that man, that would look so cool in the studio here, and it would just be an awesome piece to look at because it's the Big Lebowski. I don't know what the price point is that on that, but I'm definitely considering getting it for myself. That's cool. So are you ready for my favorite piece? You'll never be able to guess it. It's the Office Space 2-pack. Nope. My favorite really? piece is the Sour Patch Kids uh, no. Limited. Yes, it is, dude. It is my favorite piece. And no, hmm. I can guarantee everybody's like, what? Where did that come from? I don't know why, but I just think that it's a pop that represents a risk and what they were doing. And it's so out of left field. Like you said, this was such a random lineup. Never in a million years would I have guessed that it would have been a green Sour Patch Kid. And I don't even want the whole set. I just want that pop. You only want it because it's limited. Hey, I ain't afraid to say yes. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, if I were to sit here and, and pick one, um, for me, outside of the Freddies, I think it would probably have to be the um, Scott Pilgrim stuff. Both, I'm, I'm going to say it, both the Pez and the Ramona. Dude, that Ramona looks awesome. I like the way that they're starting to do all those action poses now. It yes. looks really good. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the, like, outside of like the limited pieces, outside of Freddy Funko, like the, the big stuff that I collect which I collect Scott Pilgrim too. And that's just like one that was like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta get that. Even the Pez's because I own one box of Funko cereal and it's the knives chow one from New York comic con. So oh, yeah. that is the only Pez I will purchase. And it will be Scott Pilgrim because that's the rule that I live my life by now. And I can't agree with you more there. I like the pop. I would probably get a Scott Pilgrim Pez. Not afraid to admit that. Um, I, I like the look of those Pez and it's something that I would probably take out of box too. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to take it out of the box, but it's definitely going on the shelf. I don't, I don't wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. <laughs> that was my favorite. I just, I mean, exclusivity and just the uniqueness of what they did with that. What do you think the hottest item will be? And you can't say outside of limited pieces here, but limited pieces are all anybody cares about. I don't agree with you. I, Dragon Ball is super hot. <laughs> Dragon Ball is super hot right yeah, now. It, it'll, yeah, I can see the Dragon Ball stuff. I don't, man, you know what? I, I really, it's a tough call because, oh, dude, I don't know. Game of Thrones obviously is going to be big because it's Game of Thrones and it's Arya. And I guess that. So. Uh, I'm stoked about that. It seemed a lot of people were freaking out about the Disney stuff too, mainly the the Lion King three pack with the hyenas. I think that's going to be probably a really big one. Yeah, I think it all ties into who everything shared with too. But I I'm going to go and say that it's going to be Arya Stark. That's going to be the hottest item. The Game of Thrones pieces typically don't stay on the shelves. I know you guys are probably saying like, ah, that's a that's a that's just a guess. Everybody guess that one. But I, I got to be honest. I think that that's going to be the hottest item. It's not a guess when there's statistics and facts behind it. Yes. Let me get my calculator out. Um, what will stay on the shelves the longest? Uh, we got the last one right from last year. It yeah. was the Riverdale. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, bro, uh, it's going to be Jaguar from Rick and Morty. Oh, really, man? That's a that's a pretty bold guess right there, because there are a lot of Rick and Mortys. But I will tell you something, Piper, and you'll probably agree here, too. What's happened to that collection, man? It has fallen off. I see people selling Rick and Morty stuff right and left. I'm still in mine. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, I think it's because that there are so many pieces in it, and they're so easy to come by that everybody's just kind of like, man, we're good, and it's it's there. It's a it's a Morty and a Rick for sale. Uh best offer. Nine nine dollars. <laughs> every every yeah, like literally everything in that set, every piece in that set's like six worth six dollars. It's kind of yeah, weird. Uh, it is weird. And then you have like pieces like Buff Rick and Summer that go for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, which it's, I never it's, got. But and that's because it was Emerald yeah, City yeah. and it was before Target was like on the Funko Bad Wagon, so it was hard to find. Exactly. Yeah, so you, what do you think then? If you don't think it's Jaguar, which it is, what do you think <laughs> is the answer? You're not even giving me a choice here. It's like, which it is. It is. Um, uh, well, then which one? My item that I think is going to last on those shelves for as long as possible. There's a couple of things, but I think that it's safe to say that any time you have the word pop, and then it's immediately followed by Gears of War on the top of the box. (laughs) (laughs) It's safe to assume that that will not be leaving shelves anytime soon. Can we say... Man, I absolutely forgot that that pop was even, like, existed. Yeah, I had it marked on my sheet, too. I was like, where is my sheet? Because I circled it. And I was like, that's the one that is not going to sell. It's going to be in GameStop bins everywhere for $3.99. So just if you really want that, guys, just wait a couple months and you'll get a steal of a deal. Why are they still making Gears of War pops? When's the last time a Gears of War game came out? Exactly. 1990s. Wait a second. <laughs> no, <it's> like, <laughs> I know. It's like 2013, right? Yeah, something like that. It doesn't make sense. It, it does not make sense to me. I don't know why they're. Why is that like a, a choice thing to come out at Emerald City? Granted, if they were trying to go like out of left field, then that is like outside of the stadium left field. Yeah, that's we're we're on the baseball field and they just brought a basketball in to hit with a bat. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that one, it's safe to say that, you know, that's the one that's going to be on the shelves for the longest. Wrapping things up with Emerald City. What do you guys think about all this, too? What, what pieces are you into? What pieces that you don't like? Again, we've said it a bunch of times this episode. We want to get that feedback from you guys. Hit us up on all of our social media. Let us know what you think. How did Funko do with this con? How did they do? What would you rate it out of 10? I say it gets a good eight. You know what? I I couldn't agree with you more. I think eight is the, the correct rating for this. I think that we're one piece away or limited a piece away from a solid nine or 10, but I think overall, with the variety that we were offered, I think quality and not quantity this time, I would give it an eight. I agree with you. Well, then we won again. We win always. Let us know what you guys think. I want to remind everybody to rate and review the podcast. If you haven't done this already, it goes a long way in promoting what we do here at the Pop Collectors Alliance. We have so much big news that you guys have no idea about that's going on right now. Oh my goodness, if you knew what's going to happen in the next three months, I think your head would explode. I want to say it so bad. Like it's It takes everything inside my body not to. Dude, I'm like a four-year-old when it comes to secrets. It's like, I remember I got my wife a Christmas present and I took my kids home. I think they were like five at the time, right? So I go out and I get my wife this nice Christmas present. I think it's a Lego set at the time. And I'm like, don't tell your mom. Don't tell your mom. I get right in the house and my son looks, looks up at me and he's like, hey, dad, are you going to bring mom's Legos in? And I go, that's me. <laughs> that's me when it comes to secrets. But I can assure you guys that it's nothing bad. It's all excellent. And you're going to love it. You're going to la 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 love it. If you guys haven't rated or reviewed the podcast, you can go to the Apple Podcast app. 
Search for Pop Collectors Alliance, scroll half the page, you'll see five stars. Click that fifth star, anything less, and you hate our guts. I believe we're at 110 reviews right now. We need to get to 200. We want to be the number one rated podcast on iTunes for collecting Funko. So remember, guys, every little bit helps. Take your friends, family, coworkers' phones, and rate and review the podcast. All right, we talked a lot about Toy Fair New York and the releases that are coming out there. A great place for you to buy and pre-order all of those items is at Mandrel Toys and Collectibles. You can go to mandreltoys.com, check out all their lineup for the pre-orders of the releases at Toy Fair New York 2019. It's a great place to go and buy items. They personally sponsor our podcast. We believe in what they do. They're part of our community as well. So please go to mandreltoys.com today and get all of your Toy Fair New York 2019 pre-orders. All right, and that wraps up this episode, guys. I thought we were going to go long, but I think we pounded it out. That's good for us because it's a weeknight, and it's always good to end on an earlier than later note. Uh, We hope you enjoyed the content this week. We've got a lot more content coming up because Emerald City Comic Con is going to be amazing. Don't forget about the auction this week, guys. Friday, March 1st at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you haven't seen the picture, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash popcollectorsalliance, and check out that auction. It's epic. Epic. All right, that wraps up this week's episode, guys. I'm Rick. And I'm Piper. Good night. And good luck with yourselves.